G'day, it's Cam from HowToDigitalPaint.com. I'm beginning a series on digital painting in Photoshop. You have probably seen my other videos if you've been following me on YouTube, where I have covered a lot of these things already, but for the sake of professionalism and for the sake of having a consistent, um, progressive format for people's learning, I've decided to go back to the beginning and do things progressively in episodes. So going from an introduction to then discussing tools, setting up your workspace, all these really basic things in Photoshop and then going on to more advanced stuff to do with you know, layer modes, painting, how to blend colors, how to pick colors, certain other things like that for this series. And in videos apart from this series, I will be uh, producing videos on more specific things such as painting characters and creatures and all that, all that fun. So that's the quick overview. Now, in Photoshop, you want to keep your software updated, as you want to do with every every piece of software you have. But to do that, if you don't know how, you can go up to Help, and you'll find the updates here. So that that'll help with issues such as um, brush lag and things, because I've noticed with Photoshop the the raw version that you that, that you install without updates tends to lag a lot more and has has some other issues so just keep it updated should speed things up a bit and you want to update your video drivers because the later versions of Photoshop use OpenGL software so you want to make sure that's um, working properly it's not conflicting and you also want to update your Wacom drivers so just find those on the on the website, on the Wacom website or just google it, you'll find them uh, now to set up your tablet so we'll just do that quickly you can find that in your Wacom tablet folder you'll find it elsewhere on the Mac I'm sure you guys are smart enough to do that so we want to get it set up for Photoshop so we just click this plus here we'll find Photoshop in the menu if we have Photoshop open if not find it in the browse now we've got Photoshop in here now these different keys are pretty obvious but I'll just go through some of the ones that aren't so obvious if you go to keystroke the, the reason you want to set up this is because if you've got hotkeys in Photoshop you may want to toggle them to your buttons on your tablet so I've got it set up B for brush as you can see so you just type in the, the the macro within here and then just give it a name you'll have equivalent functions on the Intuos 3 and other Wacom pro products it's pretty pretty obvious display toggle is one that helps you switch between your monitors radial menu is going to come up with this menu here as you can see we will just discuss actually setting up that radial menu um, in a minute uh, modifier so you can have all this control shift you guys can really just go through this yourself and, and find these things uh, I'll just talk about the important stuff pan and scroll is going to be useful that just works like spacebar within Photoshop so it gives you that little hand sign and you can move it around and navigate around your, your image show desktop just shows your desktop switch application is going to work like alt tab open and run is useful you might have reference folders that you always open and look at so you can set it up to open those or just have it all key to set up different applications like Photoshop precision mode is going to increase the resolution of the tablet surface area 
if you want to do really precise drawing. I never use it though, I don't find it useful. Uh, display toggle is, as I mentioned, uh, show settings is going to show all the hotkeys that you've set up on a, as a heads up display. If you're having troubles and you always forget your keys, you may want to use show settings function. And then you can just disable it or have it application defined. So I've got it set up just with different functions I always use. I always use Alt because that's the the eyedropper tool. Shift and undo all these different things. So you're, you're going to have different habits and keys you always use. So just have it appropriated to those. So you got things on the fly. Now we're looking at the touch ring. I've I've got it set up just to skip these two functions because I don't use them. I just have the touch ring for zooming in and out and for brush size. So if you want to set it up for brush size, set it this is keystroke and have the square brackets and then just put the name in here because the default hotkey for increase and decrease brush size in Photoshop is the square brackets. Or you can have it whatever you want, just uh, customize it to your liking. You will have the touch strip on the Intuos 3 and I'm not f too familiar with the other Wacom tablets so um, you should be able to be intuitive and figure that out. And uh, Display toggle is just if you only want it for one monitor or two monitors. I've got dual monitors so that's why it's coming up with that. Radial menu. Now this is this is pretty useful. I'll give you this tip. I find it heaps useful because you can just have, um, you know, this menu. I'll just show you quickly in Photoshop. So you can see this pops up, and then I can switch between brush tool or erase. It's all on the fly. I don't have to go here. Just find it a lot, lot faster because I do switch between those tools constantly. Now, to do that, you you just click in the different place you want the the key to be, and you just keystroke, and then just set it up like we did with the with the buttons. So now we're looking at grip pen. Make sure when you switch to grip pen that you click back on Photoshop. Here we can change the brush sensitivity other stylus sensitivity you can change what these buttons do change the tilt sensitivity so just change that to your liking whether you're heavy handed or light handed uh, you can change the button on the back of here and we go into mapping if you have a widescreen monitor I would suggest you click force proportions because that will set the monitor and the tablet surface drawing area to be the same proportion as each other so that that will communicate better when you're drawing and then you can also change this whether you're left or right handed and you can have the options here as well I've, these are just the default ones I've got because I'm right handed and there may be older applications that support this because the um, Intuos 4 supports 2048 pressure levels whereas older versions of Photoshop might only support this 1024 pressure levels which is with the older older tablets so that covers that if you want to save all these functions it will it will keep these when you just close that but if you if you want to um, keep a little backup file if you reinstall and all that, it's good to have. And or if you keep it on a flash drive, you can switch, put it on your laptop or your workstation. So we find that in the same folder, the Wacom Tablet Preference File Utility, and we can just click Backup and then create a backup fo uh, file. So we've created a backup now, and then yeah. And then we can also, if you're having problems or you just want to go back to the default, you can remove all that. I forgot to mention, um, 
the the glide glove is basically a sock that I've cut holes in. You can get cotton gloves from a dollar shop. And the reason I suggest you make this is because you really want to have your hands slide across the surface. You don't want it to stick and then you'll end up just kind of using your wrist a lot and that will cause a lot of problems. So I really suggest making one. Um, you can make it cheap or you can get a pair of gloves and stuff. Um, some people just put a bit of paper under their hand, which which helps it slide. But whatever whatever you fancy, but I do recommend this just for ergonomics and also to prevent RSI. And you can do some nice straight lines and stuff if you hand sliding. So yeah. So that covers that. If you guys. Um, keep following along on the blog howtodigitalpaint.com you'll see the episodes as they progress and suggest any um, please suggest any tutorials you'd like to see if you're having troubles so I can cover cover different things that people are having trouble with but that covers episode one for the, the introduction and keep a look out for the videos to come